Hi, I'm Ingo from Rose Travels and in this video we will have a detailed look at the CafeLogic Nano 7 coffee roaster. This video is mainly intended for people that newly own this roaster. It's a kind of starter guide, but of course it's also interesting for you if you're interested in the roaster and just want to know a bit more about the details of this machine. It's the first video in a series of three videos. So in this first video you will get to know the machine very well. In the second video then we will do a roast together on the CafeLogic Nano 7. And in the third video we will have a closer look at the CafeLogic Studio software. Therefore I also recommend you to now follow our channel in order not to miss anything. We will publish a lot of videos in the future about the CafeLogic Nano, about roasting in general, we will do some videos. So in order not to miss anything, follow us now and uh, now let's start. In this video we will be divided into five parts. In the first part I will talk about the function of the machine, so how, how does it function, how does it roast coffee. In the second part we will have a detailed look at the machine, at the, all the parts that are coming with it, how the machine is built and of course also um, we will have a closer look on the menu. Then in the third part we will have a look at some safety precautions. In the fourth part we will have a look at what are the first steps that you do when you receive your machine. Then in the fifth part we will talk about the maintenance of the machine. So let's start now with having a look at how this machine is functioning and how it's roasting coffee. The Cafe Logic Nano 7 is a fluid bed roaster. So it's roasting coffee with convection or in other words it's roasting coffee with hot air. The way it's working, there is a vent inside, there is a heating element inside and the machine, which is actually this part here, we'll talk about this part a bit later. So the roasting machine is this part here, it's sucking air from the bottom through the machine, it's heating the air and then on the top there is this roasting chamber and in this roasting chamber there are holes and these holes are um, so built that it's producing a circular hot air stream and this circular stream is firstly moving the beans because coffee beans have always to be moving when roasting and then it's transferring the heat into the beans. Therefore the coffees are very regularly and evenly roasted in this small roasting chamber and then at the end the hot air is being released at the top of the machine and in order because during roasting these chuffs um, are released from the coffee beans in order that not your whole kitchen is full of these chuffs. You will place this chuff collector. So the only function of this one here is to collect these chuffs inside and then you can nicely throw them out in the bean. What you can influence in this machine are the strengths of the airflow, of the air stream, by the power that goes into the vent. And the second thing is the temperature of the air stream by the power that goes into the heating element. So on one hand you can really um, measure the power that goes into these two parts, but what you will mostly do then when you're practically roasting is measuring the temperature with the thermocouple that is built in. And in this machine it's a so-called naked thermocouple. It's a thermocouple that measures the temperature of the beans but in order to be even more precise than a standard thermocouple, they even opened it, so it's a so-called naked thermocouple, which is measuring the temperature very quickly and very precisely. The way you control the roast is a so-called PID. So this means that you are designing a temperature curve and the machine automatically follows this temperature curve. So if the temperature curve that you design is going up, it's putting more heat into the machine, if the temperature curve is flattening or even going down, then it's putting less heat into the machine and therefore it can really precisely follow this temperature curve. This is something nice about these small convection roaster, fluid bed roasters, that they can really precisely follow a temperature curve. In the second part of this video, we will have a closer look at the machine itself. I will now show you what's coming with the machine when you order it, when you get it, and this is Firstly, the roasting machine. So this part of the machine is really where all the matching is happening. Then here we have 
the so-called chaff collector. The function of the chaff collector is to collect the chaffs that are coming out of the roasting machine in order not to have a kitchen full of chaffs. Then you will have this scoop that is coming with the roaster. The idea behind this one is that you can measure the amount of beans that you're putting in the roaster. You can then um, really nicely um, fill the machine with it. Nevertheless, I recommend you to measure the amount of beans with a scale in order to be more precise. And if you have seen the other videos in my channel as well, you know that the beans have different densities. And um, this means if you take always the same volume of beans, you will have different weights. So for example, a monsoon malabar, which has much lower density than, for example, a highly grown strictly hard bean from Guatemala. Um, if you take the same volume of beans, they will have very different uh, weights. So I recommend you take a scale and weigh the beans that you're putting in the roaster. Then you will have a USB stick that is coming with the machine. This USB stick can be put into your computer, so you can use it with the Cafe Logic Studio software on a PC, on a Mac or on a Linux computer. And you can then also put it in the machine at the back. On these USB sticks are on one hand the firmware, so if there is a far firmware update, it's uh, being put with the USB stick on the machine. But uh, even more important, there are the roasting profiles on this stick. So when you get your machine, you have already 12 roasting profiles that have been developed by the Cafe Logic team and they are saved on this USB stick. If you get some more roasting profiles from other people or if you develop your own roasting profiles, you do that in the Cafe Logic Studio software and then can save it on this USB stick and transfer it to your machine. In addition to that, if the USB stick is um, inside your machine when you're doing roasts, then the logs of your roasts will be saved. I really recommend you to save the logs in order to later have a look at the PC and have a look at the logs. And last but not least, there is a printed manual that is coming with the machine and I of course recommend you to read it. There is a lot of relevant information in this manual. Now we'll have a look at the roasting machine itself. As you can see, it's quite a high and slender machine. If you could see inside the machine, you would see mainly a vent which is then um, putting the air from the bottom to the top of the roaster. You would see a heating element inside and of course some electronics. And here in this part of the roaster, this is really important for you. This is then the display and these are also then the five buttons with which you can control the roaster. If you're having a look at this side of the roaster, you can see this is the switch to switch the machine on and off. At the back of the roaster you see of course the power cord and then here you see the port where you can plug in your USB stick. Then if you are having a look at the bottom of the roaster you can see these slots here. These are the slots where the air is being sucked in. And if you are having a look at the top of the roaster you can look inside the roaster and then you see the roasting chamber where all the magic is happening. You see at the bottom of the roasting chamber there are these slots that are mounted that way that the air is then um, being put in a circular airflow. And with the circular airflow then the beans are perfectly moved in order to make an even roast. And then if you look here a little bit higher there is the thermocouple reaching into the roast chamber. The great thing about the Cafe Logic Nano is that it's really measuring the bean temperature, which is a very precise way of um, measuring the roast development. You can see that this thermocouple is even opened in the front. This is in order to make it even faster and more precise. They make a so-called naked thermocouple. Although it may look a bit fragile, it's very robust and it will not break if you use it just normally properly for roasting coffee on this. The only thing you have to be careful is when you're reaching in the roast chamber, for example with a stick or a brush or something like that, not to damage then the thermocouple. So be a bit careful if you do that, otherwise this thermocouple is very robust. Now let's have a look at the menu where you are going to control the roaster. 
Here you can see the most important part for you when you're OS with the Cafe Logic Nano, which is on one hand the display, and then these five control buttons. Here you can see the five buttons. Um, the first one is a minus button, the second a plus button. They have some other functions as well, but mainly it's about um, changing the values higher or lower. In the midst, there is the so-called play button, which is uh, on one hand to start a roast, but um, as well something like an OK button. If you um, do a choice, a confirmation of a choice, then you press, press the middle button, the play button. The fourth button is a profile button. With this one, you can choose the roasting profile. And the fifth one is a menu button with which you can switch through the menu of the roaster. And then if you have a look at the display, now it's showing ready, so the machine would be ready to roast. Then in the middle is the roast level. So Cafe Logic is thinking in roast level, which is related to the roast color of a roast. So level 0 0.1, which is the lowest one, is a really super, super light roast. Um, then 5.9 would be a super, super dark roast. And then we will go into this roast level more in the other video where we talk about roasting. And then in the last one, you see the temperature that the beam probe is currently measuring. And below this K-Logic Classic means this is the chosen profile at the moment. The K-Logic Classic profile is the one that's on the machine when it's being delivered to you. If we go through the menu, you can see um, some possible functions. So first one is live data. When you're roasting, you see in the bottom line um, a watt number. Now this is zero because we are not roasting, but this is actually the um, power of the heating element. Like this, you can see how much power, how much heat is being put into your roast chamber. The second one is the RPM of the vent. So here you can see how strongly the airflow is at the moment. And the last one, which is now showing something like 0 0.6, is the rate of rise, where you can yeah, live, have a live view on the rate of rise of your roast. Then the second point in the menu is so-called last roast information. You see the last roast that I did was a roast that took 8 minutes and 19 seconds. I roasted to roast level 2, a very light roast, because I did some cuppings. I roasted to a temperature of 216 degrees Celsius, and the cooling period of this roast was 3 minutes and 50 seconds. The roast that I did has the number 0046, so if I look at the file on my USB stick, then I will see this number. It's a cupping profile that I did. So the next menu button after live data and last roast info are instructions. And here you could go through um, a very simple instruction on how to roast with the machine. So it says now add 120 grams of green beans, uh, put the chuff collector on top, turn on the kitchen fan in order to bring smoke outside, choose the roast level and so on. So here you will get some instructions as well, uh, provided by Cafe Logic. but if you have had a look at these videos, you know exactly how to roast. Then the last menu point are technical information, and um, this is actually mainly needed if you're, for example, in contact with the service team. Usually you don't need that, but you can have a look at the model number, for example, of your machine, about the firmware that you have on your machine, about the serial number of your machine, and then you see the temperature of your beam probe, you see the input in volts of your machines. I have 236 here. Um, I have a viable power of 1,479 watts for my heating element. I see how many hours my motor was working, around nine hours, my heat around six hours. And um, this is the information that is being provided here, but usually you don't need that. Then when you put in your USB stick to the machine, it's being scanned. And then if there is, for example, a firmware update, then the firmware will be updated. Um, but most important for you, 
is when you're putting the USB stick that on one hand you have these 12 profiles that the manufacturer developed for you. You can have the profiles that you your own developed or you shared with some friends. And in addition to that, when you have the USB in the roaster, your logs will be recorded and you, you can have a look at your logs on the PC later on. So I will now quickly show uh, what would happen now. But as you know, uh, there will be another video where I then in detail go into the menu settings for a roast. So what in particular you are doing now is choosing a roasting profile with the profile button. The profiles that um, Cafe Logic is providing with the machine are mainly based on the heights above sea level where the beans have been grown because this has a direct impact on the density and the style of roasting of a bean. And for each um, height they have a selection of either a rest profile, which means that uh, as usual you roast the coffee, you leave it for about three to five days for degassing and then you're drinking, but they also provide you with ready to drink roasts, which are profiles that can be drunk right now out of the roaster. So if you're impatient or you don't have any coffee at home anymore, you can use a ready to drink profile. This coffee should be consumed in the, yeah, within three to four days because after that they start to stale quite quickly. But yeah, it's a nice option if you need your coffee immediately. Then when you have chosen your profile, the profile is being loaded to your machine. And as a next step, you can choose the color and then start your roast. In the third part of the video, we will have a look at safety and also some remarks on how to work with the machine. The Cafe Logic Nano is designed to be used indoors, so it's, um, it shouldn't be exposed to weather and it should be used on a really solid surface. So like for example on a table like this, the way this is important is, um, as you have seen before, there are these slots on the bottom where the air is being sucked in. So this space be below the machine is really important for the airflow of the machine. If you have a soft surface, like for example a carpet, then the air cannot really flow through the machine and the airflow will be, will be stopped. Therefore, it's important to take a solid surface, a flat surface, and it's also important to have a look that you're away from walls, especially at the top of the machine, that there is not a cupboard or anything else around because there is air, um, there is air with much more than 200 degrees Celsius coming out of the machine. So all around the machine, the space should be free. Also that you look that nowhere the, the airflow is being interrupted so that nothing is close to the machine which can interrupt the airflow. And what's also really important is that the area where you're roasting is clean so that there are not any, for example, chuffs um, around here because um, if you understand the way the air is flowing through the machine, being sucked in at the bottom, then you can imagine if there are a lot of chuffs around being sucked in the machine through these slots here, which is then of course um, very bad for the machine. So take a look after the roast that you're cleaning the surface where you're roasting and then you will have uh, a machine that is uh, lasting very long for you. Take care that uh, the machine is getting hot, in particular at the top, and especially the chaff collector is getting really hot because it's mounted on top of the machine where the hot air is uh, being let out of the machine. So when you take the chaff collector, you have to be aware that this tube is uh, the way uh, in the chaff collector that is not falling out. So this one would be the wrong side. This is the right side where the tube is um, is being held by the chaff collector. You put the cover on it and as I said, especially after the roasting, be careful, it's really hot. So either wait until it's cooled down or take, for example, a heat resistant cloth to, to take away the chaff collector. Also take care that the chaff collector is not um, having too many chaffs in it. I usually empty the chaff collector after each roast. The Cafe Logic team says it can be filled until about midway and then has to be emptied. So take care that the chuffs are being 
put out of the chaff collector regularly. In the fourth part of this video, I will show you what are the first steps that you do when you get your machine. So firstly, you have here the USB stick and I recommend you to download the Cafe Logic Studio software to your computer. It can be PC, Mac or Linux. Then connect the USB stick and like that you can check if the most actual firmware is on the USB stick. You can check if the most actual profiles that have been developed by the um, Cafe Logic team are on the USB stick. So the way this is working is pretty simple. If you go to the Cafe Logic Studio software and then you plug your USB to your computer, you can see here there is a little icon of the memory stick. Just press on this icon and here you see what's all on the memory stick. There are locks, so the locks are the last rows that you did that are saved on the stick. Profiles are the profiles that you have saved on your stick. Then here you can see core profiles. These are the profiles that are being um, developed uh, by the Cafe Logic team and firmware is the firmware of your roasting machine. And if you go on firmware, you can see here it says the firmware update on Nano 7 is the latest. If it wouldn't be the latest, so if there would be a newer version, this one would be a blue link where you can just click on and then the newest firmware version would be installed. And once you connect your USB to the machine, it will update the firmware. Core profiles, you can see here on Cafe Logic website, these are the newest, most actual profiles that Cafe Logic um, is offering you. And here on your USB, you can check. And here it's obviously that all the profiles that Cafe Logic has been giving us are already on the stick which should also actually be the case if you get your stick but you can check this and if there are some profiles missing or not the newest one if there would be newer version you could just click on this blue link and then it would be updated if you then put in the usb stick to your machine if there is a newer firmware it will be upgraded and um, Concerning the profiles, they are just on the stick. You don't have to do anything. You will see in the next video how this is working. So as long as there are profiles on the stick, you will be able to choose them in the ROSE process. And for that, I can really refer you to the next video that will be coming. Another thing you can do as a first test, if the machine is working properly, is you do an empty ROSE. It's important to choose the K-Logic Classic ROSE profile that it's um, the generic roasting profile on your machine. You do an empty roast, so you just start a roast without any beans inside, so no beans inside, start a roast. The machine will heat up for about 10 to 20 seconds to around 90 degrees Celsius. And then there will be an error message, heat too fast, and the roaster will be cooling down um, it himself to around 40 degrees Celsius, and then the machine will be sort of switching off. So if you do this procedure, procedure and it's working well, then the machine is ready. And what you can already start to do when you're doing this is putting in your USB stick, because like that you will have the first lock already in your machine. You can then um, stick the USB stick to your computer and then you will see if the lock is recorded. And if the lock is being properly recorded, then you're ready to start. Now in the fifth part we are talking about the maintenance of the machine and in fact this machine is probably the one that needs the less maintenance of, of, um, of all that we have in our assortment. All you're taking care of is that the chuffs is be, are being taken away from the chuff collector regularly. I take out the chuffs after each roast. The Cafe Logic team says that um, the maximum can be about halfway up with the chuffs and then it has to be emptied. So empty the chuff collector regularly. And then also take care that yeah, the area around your roaster, as I said before, is cleaned. But also here around the roaster, you can then use a slightly damp cloth and then uh, clean, clean it here in order to take away the chuffs that are here. You can also take a slightly damp cloth to then uh, clean a bit the outside of the machine. Take care not to take uh, water so that no water is um, getting inside of the machine. 
because there is of course a lot of electronics inside. When you're having a look at the rose chamber, you will see the rose chamber is having some residues um, very quickly. It will look a bit brown very quickly because of the oils that are inside of the coffee and are coming out when you're roasting coffee. This um, is okay like this. You shouldn't clean the, the roast chamber. You can really leave it like it is. Only if there are really a lot of residues and it's very oily and it's affecting the taste of your roast, then you could um, use, for example, a coffee machine cleaner, but also be careful not to use um, a lot of water because no water should be getting inside the roast chamber. So you can really carefully then clean the roast chamber. Be also very careful with the thermocouple, as I said before. It's very solid, but if you're then, uh, for example, cleaning it, you have to be careful not to touch it, um, not to break the thermocouple. But as I said, you don't need to do that. You don't really need to clean the roast chamber, leave it as it is only if there is really a lot of residues and if it's really dirty then uh, you can do this. That's it. I hope this video was helpful for you. As I said, there will be two other videos coming, one where we do a roast together on the Cafe Logic Nano and another one where we have a look at the Cafe Logic Studio software. So just follow our channel in order not to miss them. And uh, if you have any more questions about the Cafe Logic Nano, you can write in the comment below or you can send me an email or a WhatsApp. You find my contact on roastrebels.com.